How do you disarm the West? What was the strategy that Khrushchev, in 1957, Khrushchev started something called the Brezhnev Committee, which met to revise Soviet strategy for the nuclear age. Here you had Sputnik, you had hydrogen bombs. How are you going to do it? They came up with the idea of faking the collapse of the Soviet Union at some time in the distant future. It was part of a 40-year long-range strategy that they came up with, and it had two completely different elements to it. It had a nuclear war element to exploit the disarmament of the West, but it had a collapse of communism element. We know this from other defectors. This defector, uh, Anatoly Galitsyn, was a major in the KGB. He was started out in counterintelligence. He moved over. He ended up becoming, I think, the deputy resident of the Soviet embassy in Finland from where he defected in 1961. This is a quote from Galitsyn's book, New Lies for Old. This is a very important book. It was published, it was actually written before Gorbachev and actually written before Brezhnev uh, died. So he's writing at the height of the Cold War and he says, if in a reasonable time liberalization can be successfully achieved in Poland and elsewhere, and he's talking about a fake liberalization, a controlled liberalization in East Eastern Europe, it will serve to revitalize the communist regimes concerned. The activities of false opposition, that is, in the communist world, they create false opposition groups, which the KGB controls. So the activities of false opposition will further confuse and undermine the genuine opposition in the communist world. Externally, the role of dissidents will be to persuade the West that the liberalization is spontaneous and not controlled. Liberalization will create conditions for establishing solidarity between trade unions and intellectuals in the communist and non-communist worlds. In time, such alliances will generate new forms of pressure against Western militarism in favor of disarmament. Now remember, the whole strategy is disarmament. How do you get the West to disarm? While you're not disarming, you pretend to surrender. You pretend to fake the collapse of communism. Again, Galitzin continued, if liberalization is successful and accepted in the West as genuine, it may well be followed by the apparent withdrawal of one or more communist countries from the Warsaw Pact. Now this is pr prophetic. He goes on, the suggested European option would be promoted by a revival of controlled democratization on the Czechoslovak pattern in Eastern Europe, including probably Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. The intensification of hardline policies and methods in the Soviet Union presages a switch to democratization following perhaps Brezhnev's de departure from the political scene. Now get this, Brezhnev's successor may well appear to be a kind of Soviet Dubček. Now if you remember the Czech Spring in 1968, Dubček was a liberalizing Czech. That was an experiment that the Russians conducted to see if they could control, have a controlled liberalization in one of the bloc countries. And of course, famously, the Soviet army came in and crushed it. But that experiment told them what they could do, if they could control it, and how it would work. That was a dress rehearsal for what they had in mind for Eastern Europe. Galitsyn continued, the liberalization would be spectacular and impressive. Formal, pr formal pronouncements might be made about a reduction in the Communist Party's role. Its monopoly would be apparently curtailed. An ostensible separation of powers between the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary might be introduced. The Supreme Soviet would be given greater apparent independence. The posts of President of the Soviet Union and First Secretary of the Party might well be separated. The KGB would be reformed. Dissidents at home would be amnestied, and those in exile abroad would be allowed to return, and some would take up positions of leadership. Now, it's very important in this context that Galitzin's book contains, uh, Mark Riebling, who wrote the book Wedge, uh, was a scholar who went through Galitzin's book and he, he found 140 falsifiable predictions. And that by 1992, uh, almost 94% of those predictions had come true. And more have come true since then. And I'll discuss that, this again. Now, Jan Sena, as if no other defector had mentioned this faking the collapse of the Warsaw Pact, the Eastern Bloc Alliance. Jan Sena was one of the several of the top communist leaders in communist Czechoslovakia. And he wrote this book in 1982, We Will Bury You. And this is what he wrote. 
He wrote, the erosion of NATO begun in phase two of the long-range strategy would be completed by the withdrawal of the United States from its commitment to the defense of Europe and by European hostility to military expenditure generated by economic recession. To this end, we envisaged that it might be necessary to dissolve the Warsaw Pact, right? That's what they did. In which event, we had already prepared a web of bilateral defense arrangements to be super supervised by secret committees at Comic-Con. That is astonishing. You've got two defectors both saying they're, they're going to fake the collapse of the Warsaw Pact, the, their Eastern European alliance. Now, the fall of communism. What's wrong with this picture? Look at this picture. This is them taking down this giant, giant statue of Lenin. It's enormous. I'll tell you, I, I had a long conversation with a disgruntled former KGB officer who talked to me about this event. And he was working for the KGB residency in Vienna at the time that this happened. And he said, we all knew that the collapse of communism was fake, that it was controlled. And how did we know? Look at how gently they're taking down this statue. This statue is not being destroyed. It's not being toppled. The head's not being knocked off, as you saw in the genuine uprising in Hungary in 1956. This is being taken away for storage to be put back up later on. Now, Yevgeny Albatz, one of the most fascinating people in, uh, in Russia, a journalist, she wrote a book around 1994, I think is when it was translated into English, uh, called The KGB, Today, Tomorrow, um, and Forever. Uh, she questioned the authenticity of the August 1991 coup. She believes that the politicians and the public in Russia do not possess the tools needed to overcome a sophisticated monolithic security service like the KGB. She says that Russia was a police state even under Boris Yeltsin, that the West was fooled by Russia's democratic pretenses, and that Russia is currently preparing for war against the United States. Just saw an interview with her, which is linked at the bottom, which is absolutely fascinating. If you go to the end of that interview, she says some terrifying things about Putin and Russia's in intentions. Um, she says that Putin is not afraid to fight a war, that Russia is being bombarded with anti-American propaganda 24-7. Those are her words, 24-7. Fascinating analysis. Um, now, the revolutions in Eastern Europe, you're going to say, yeah, communism fell. Well, yes, uh, it, was, uh, it didn't all go as planned. I'd, I've had long conversations with uh, uh, former uh, communists and people from the Soviet Union, people who had been in sensitive positions. And they've told me some very interesting stories, which you won't find in print anywhere. Um, but I'll, I'll show you some things that have been in print that have been ignored by our mainstream media and by scholars. Uh, the documentary filmmaker Robert Bukhar revealed that the Velvet Revolution in Czechoslovakia was directed on orders from Moscow. He interviews some former STB, uh, Czech Communist Secret Police officers, who were operating on orders from Moscow. They arranged the Velvet Revolution. One of them even uh, played the part of a dead body, of a dead protester who died, who is commemorated every year. Uh, as, uh, of course, they gave him an airplane ticket to Moscow, which he didn't take. Um, it, these are incredible stories coming from credible people. And of course, Bukhar does a magnificent job. Uh, Reality Be Damned is the name of the, the book that he wrote about the subject. Uh, then there's Andrei Kadrescu, the famous Romanian-American who was one of the first people from the West to go into Romania during the re 1989 revolution that overthrew Ceausescu. And what he found uh, and wrote about in his book, The Hole in the Flag, is astonishing. He was in a small Transylvania town. He couldn't sleep. He went out. He met a Russian journalist. They started drinking, and the Russian journalist told him that they had come there a week before the revolution began. And he thought, wait a minute, why did this big group of Russian journalists come to this nowhere Transylvania town a week before anything happened and the, the guy winked at him. And he said, wait a minute, you mean in Moscow they knew this revolution was going to happen? And he winked again. So Kudrescu looked into this much closer and he found that the whole overthrow of Ceausescu was orchestrated from Moscow. It was, uh, it was run by Romanian generals that were under control of the GRU and the KGB. Uh, then there is about Polish solidarity. Uh, there have been now books and documentaries, even a court trial, where a famously a former uh, Polish communist secret police officer named Lak Walesa, the head of Solidarity Union, as a longtime agent of the communist secret police in Poland. 
uh, of course, which he has denied. Uh, code name was Bolek. And there's been a book come out in Poland on this. Uh, look, uh, remember what Galitzin said about controlled opposition being a key component of the false collapse of communism. Uh, Ukraine is a very special case because the Ukrainian people, like the Polish people, have fought against Moscow very courageously. But every time there's been a revolution, there's been about four revolutions in Ukraine since the supposed fall of communism because each time they collapse communism, they find the same Soviet types in charge of their country, the same apparatchiks. So they have to have another orange revolution, another one all over again. Uh, 1991, 92, 1990, I think it was 95, uh, 2003, and again uh, more recently. Um, so it's, it's, and of course, when you find out that in, in 2014, 20, late 2013 and 2014, they're knocking down hundreds of statues of Lenin in Ukraine. How come these statues of Lenin weren't taken down if the communists weren't defeated earlier? You see, the real revolution in Ukraine happened more recently, which has caused you know, Russia a lot of trouble.